All right, so we're coming into 2023 and I want to help you guys set up your Galaxy smartphone in a way that it makes you really efficient, productive and fast. Okay, so let's hit it. So the first thing is the home screen and I've got a very minimal wallpaper. I will link it in the description below. So download it. And this is led on top with three widgets and some important apps that I use. Now I'm using Nova Launcher for this and if you don't use Nova, this is how it will look, which is still pretty good. And how you get this look, I will explain towards the end of the video. So hang tight. So I've got a weather widget, a real time clock widget and a widget that provides me access to basic apps that you know you use frequently every day. And additionally, I use WhatsApp, Slack and Gallery a lot. So I simply pull them out from the app drawer. On the next page, I've placed a calendar widget which keeps me on my toes and focused. It's the native Samsung calendar app widget, which I think looks beautiful, by the way. It shows all my events across all my calendars for the week, and I can even add events from here, so it's really fast. But I'm not so much of a calendar guy, I'm more of a to-do kind of a person. So I've got a Todoist widget here that tells me all my tasks that are due and I can also just add a task really quickly from within this widget. And by the way, if you guys want to know more about how to use Todoist, I have done a video, I'll link it here in the top right corner. So you can check it out after this video. Next is the app drawer and I've neatly organized them into how I use them. So first tab is work, then pay, then socials and all the others in one tab usually the apps that I don't use as often. Now I've kept the first one as work, so you know, they're the easiest to access and then my payment apps. And I try not to use much of social media apps either. But if there is an app that I'm looking for, I simply search here and it's just a lot faster that way. But yes, to get these tabs and this kind of an app drawer, you are going to need Nova Launcher and how I use Nova to kind of get this, I'll explain towards the end of the video. Now, obviously, if you don't use Nova Launcher, you will not be able to create those tabs and you're going to see all your apps laid out, you know, page by page in your app drawer the way you're used to. Next, under quick settings, I've done a few things. All these setting toggles are the ones that I use frequently. Everything else is removed. So if you go into edit buttons and you can drag and drop settings that you're not going to use. So, you know, why have them here? Just get rid of them and keep it very clean. Of course, if you want to add them back, just tap on plus and then you can drag them right back. And then I've prioritized the ones that I use the most as the first six and that will be the easiest to access. Now, if you want to, you know, reorganize them, you can just tap on the menu, click on edit buttons, long press on the one uh, that you want to shift and then just drag it and drop it. And you can do that for all of these. Once you're done, you're left with your top six. Now, I also change the brightness of the display very often and that's one thing I want access to very quickly. I don't want to swipe twice to get to the brightness bar. In your case, you may have to be swiping twice, right? Also, if you see I've got buttons for device control and media output, you probably see it too but never use it. So go into quick panel layout and change that to don't show. And for the brightness bar, again, go back into quick panel layout and set it to show always. Next, I've also got some edge panels that provide very useful functionalities. First, an extremely quick access to calculator. I don't need to look for any app. I want a quick calculation and I can do it right here. Next, I can quickly get into shooting a video or a photo directly. I don't have to go into the app and change the mode. I can also instantly get inside my screenshots album very quickly, which I use a lot and also get into the dialer real quick. I've also got a clipboard here, which maintains a history of everything I've copied and I can access it anytime, copy anything from within that and paste it in any app that I wish to use it in. And lastly, I've got a contacts edge panel and I've placed contacts that I talk to most frequently and this allows me to call them in under two clicks. It's really fast. And you know, the best thing about these edge panels is that I can call them out irrespective of which app I'm in and that makes them super convenient. Now, if you want to turn them on, just go into your settings, then head over to display and then scroll down to where it says edge panels. Now, it might not be available on all Galaxy smartphones, but hopefully you've got it. Now, if you go into edge panels, you'll see all the panels that are already installed. You can just turn them on or off. And if you don't see, for example, the calculator edge panel, just go into the Galaxy store and you'll see many more edge panels that may be of use to you. And you can just download them, install them. And once you do, it appears in the library of your panels uh, from where you can activate them and you can even reorder them basis your priority preferences. 
Next, now if you see at the bottom, I've got no navigation buttons. You probably have these navigation buttons, but I prefer the minimal look. But even with this, you get all functions. You can go back by swiping from any of the sites. You could go home by swiping from the center. And if you swipe from center and hold, you'll be able to access your recent apps. So all of those functions are there. And you can turn this on by going into settings, then going into display, and then into navigation bar, and then set it to swipe gestures. That's it. And sure, it may take some time for you to get used to this functionality, but once you do, there's no going back. But wait, there's more. So if I swipe diagonally down, I can open the notification tray and it doesn't matter which app I am in, I can quickly call the notification tray and I can access the notifications that I may have gotten. Additionally, I can swipe to the left and hold to take a screenshot and all of this is possible through one hand operation plus. It's built by Samsung developers so if you just turn it on, it's going to be off by default and then just set these as controls for your left handle and right handle as you see on the screen right now and these functions will be activated for you. And actually it's totally up to you. You could set from any of these functions in this entire list. It's very comprehensive and there's a lot of functions in here that you're probably using. I've also set up my side key so that if I double tap, it launches the camera and it's one app that I want to get to really quickly no matter where I am on my phone, okay? To do this, I go into settings, then I scroll down to advanced features and there's side key right there. Now on double press, right, turn it on and you can set it to quick launch camera or actually you can open any app that you want very frequent access to. So just double tap the power button and you get into that app. Now a couple of really cool things. So if you see my auto rotation is turned off, it's set to portrait, right? But when I go to gallery, auto rotation turns on automatically because you know, I may be wanting to watch a video in the gallery and as soon as I exit, it turns off by itself. The same thing can happen, let's say right now it's turned off and let me open YouTube, right? Because that's one place where you would like to see it in landscape and there you go. Auto rotation turned on and I exit YouTube and there you go, <laughs> it turns off. And I like to keep my phone on portrait because I don't like my emails or my phone dialer accidentally turning into landscape. And so this way, apps that require rotation to be turned on, my phone can do that automatically for them. And just like this, I have another one where location turns on for apps that require location access. And when those apps are not in use, my location is turned off and all of this happens automatically. And so it also saves a ton of battery. So here you go, let's say my location is turned off right now. You know, I'm not using anything that uses location, but let's say I go into Google Maps. That's when location turns on by itself. And once I'm done using Google Maps, it turns off automatically saving me battery. So how do you do it? Go into settings and look for routines. Hopefully it's on your Galaxy smartphone. And when you do that, go into routines tab. And then if I go into auto rotate, you'll see that I've set some apps, which when opened will turn on auto rotation, right? If I go into auto location, I've pretty much set banking apps, food delivery apps, Uber or Lyft apps. When they turn on or when they are launched, my location setting should be turned on. And as soon as I exit them, it just reverses that setting. And there's actually a lot of these to discover. So if you click on the discover tab, you can go through the entire list and I'm sure you'll find something that's useful to you, okay? For example, there's one which, you know, it'll tell you when your phone's battery is fully charged. It's gonna do all of these things automatically. You could just hit save and it gets, you know, added to your routines. But if you want the one that I spoke about, auto rotate, just go into discover, click on best media experience and then there's an auto rotate. Now within the apps, just go there and add apps that you want this to work for. So, you know, you can add your streaming apps, you could add your gallery, wherever you want your screen's rotation to be turned on for auto rotation, add them, hit save, you're all set. Now, let me also touch upon the keyboard that I use and that's Google Keyboard. And it's simply because of the typing experience, the smoothness, the accuracy, the prediction, it's unparalleled in my opinion. It also dynamically themes itself based on the color scheme of your phone. So it looks great too. And it has a bunch of very useful tools, including a clipboard, which makes it a very efficient keyboard. And I have done a full video explaining all the good stuff about Google Keyboard that you may actually not know of. I'll leave it here in the card, so definitely check it out after the video. 
Okay, now let's talk about how you can get that exact aesthetic look on your phone. Okay, and I'm going to start for people who don't use Nova Launcher. And then I'll talk about uh, how you can get the look for people who do use Nova Launcher. But I do suggest everyone watch through these steps because I'm going to talk about the widgets and how you can get them. Okay, let's go. Okay, first make sure you've got all these three apps and you've got Apple for KWGT widgets. Okay, now if you're using a Galaxy smartphone, it looks something like this, right? So pinch to zoom and then you can go to the left and you can turn this off if you don't use it or let it be. But remove all the other pages, okay? And just add one extra screen. Now remove all of these widgets and all of these apps. Just long press on them and remove them. Then download the wallpaper from the link in the description and open it in your gallery. Then just tap on this three dots, set it as a wallpaper on your home screen. And then when you click on done at the top, You'll also get the option to choose a color scheme. Make sure you choose the one that I'm choosing over here and turn on apply palette to app icons. Okay, turn it on and hit apply. Now, once you do that, your icons are going to look like this. Then touch, hold and drag the app icons that you use the most and just, you know, put them outside so you've got easy access to them. And once we're done with that, we're going to start placing the widgets. Okay, so long press on the home screen, click widgets and then search for KWGT. Hopefully you install KWGT widgets and then just hold and drag the widget outside. Okay, and resize it to that, you know, uh, weather size that you saw. And then you can repeat this process for the clock as well as the app shortcut widget. Now from here on it's really simple, just tap on the first widget and search for 097. Okay, and if you've installed Share KWGT widget, you're going to see that widget as a search result. Tap on it, go into layer and increase the size just so that, you know, it fits the widget size. And then if you go to the home screen, it nicely fits there. Now do the same thing for the bottom widget, but you search for 020 this time. Again, another widget in the Share KWGT widget pack. Yeah, there you go. Tap on it. Now, if it looks a little small, you can increase the size and we don't need that text at the bottom. So just let's delete that. Go into layer, increase the size so it fits, you know, edge to edge. Hit save and that's it. And for the clock widget, just search for 00133. And if you've installed Apple for KWGT widgets, that clock widget will show up. Hit save, go out and there you go. That's it. Now for the calendar and the to-do widget. So long press on the home screen, click on widgets and search for calendar and scroll down to the long calendar style and take it out. Now you can increase its height so that you know you've got more calendar events. Long press, go into settings and now reduce the opacity so it has this nice blur in the background. And long press on it again, create a stack and now go to Todoist because that's my choice of to-do app. There you go, that one. Click on it and say add. And I'll just customize it a little so that it looks a lot like the calendar widget. I'll choose dot dynamic color, reduce the opacity so it has the same uh, transparency. And there you go. Both my widgets are ready. Now, if you are using Nova Launcher, it's going to be a lot easier for you. OK, make sure you've got Linux white icon pack installed. And then there's not much to do. If you want this entire setup, OK, I have done it and I have exported the Nova backup file. You just go into Nova settings, click on restore and then restore the backup file that you can download from the link in the description. It'll appear in your file manager. You just select that file and the entire setup will load up on your phone. OK, so it's going to be really easy for you guys. Just make sure under look and feel icon pack, you choose Linux wide icon pack. Now, you may still have to change the grid size of your home screen and app drawer to match with your phone's display because I'm doing it for the S21 FE, but that's the most change that you may have to do. Now, for some of you who don't know how to use Nova Launcher or KWGT widgets, I'm going to leave a link here in the cards. I've done a tutorial video, okay, and that walks you through Nova and KWGT step by step. So even if you're a beginner, it should get you started. All right, so that's pretty much it, guys. Now, if you guys get stuck anywhere, feel free to ask me in the comment section. I'll definitely help you out. And I really hope this video was helpful. And if it was, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification icon, and mark all. That really helps the channel grow. I'll see you guys in the next one.